And welcome to a brand new week of Capital Talk, a program we hope will have an impact on the future of Kenya. Now more than ever, I'm Jeff Kuneng. Now this week we want to turn to something very serious and very appropriate, especially in this country, but something that many of us do not think about on a daily basis, namely conservation. We're going to dedicate the whole week to people going out of their way to make sure this country, our people, stay as they should, do what they should, despite the credit, and they don't get any credit for it. That's the bottom line. And we're going to begin with a young lady, folks, who, I tell you, imagine this, PhD in ecology and evolutionary biology. Wow. Check that out. <laughs> and she was a classmate. Whoa, what did, I, what did I go wrong? So anyway, she's talking about a very serious subject, because ever since the banning of DDT, remember that uh, pesticide back in the 70s? Another pesticide called Furidan was introduced into the market. Now, for the most part, this chemical is literally undetectable. In fact, it's so undetectable, it's wiping out everything from wildlife to fish to insects to birds, and it's even killing people. Imagine there were more than 15,000 lions out there in the parks around the country. That's down to 2,000. Because farmers, individuals, are using, is, are using this to poison the lions. And of course, when the vultures come and feed on the lions, they also die. Vulture pop population is down to half what it was, folks. This is a serious, serious topic. And guess what? Flower farmers in Naivasha, when you see fish plunking out of the water, it's probably this. Serious stuff. This young lady has just been nominated for the National Geographic Buffett Award for Conservation. Very prestigious award. It's gonna be given out in the US. One African gets it every year. Obviously, someone is paying attention. It's time for you to pay attention. Sit back, folks. We're talking conservation with Dr. Paula Kahumbu. Hey, Doc. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. What was it, evolutionary what? <laughs> evolutionary biology. Which means? Well, it's just the study of how uh, nature has evolved on this planet. All the extraordinary ecosystems, wildlife, uh, plants, animals, their interactions. Many, many of the plants around you depend on other plants and animals yeah. for their survival. And you, so, and you went to study this in school? I mean, we were literally classmates. What was I doing in those days? I was always interested in uh, wildlife and conservation. I initially, after leaving high school, I wanted to be a George Adamson's field assistant. That's all I wanted to be, you know, a ranger out in Cora. Um, and at that time, of course, it was the lions. That was my big, the big thing that I wanted to do. I went on to do my PhD, I studied elephants and I studied uh, the interaction between elephants and a particularly very special forest down in the Kenya coast called the Shimba Hills. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did my PhD on, looking at how elephants actually manage their habitats and their environments and it's very, very fascinating. Elephants are incredible creatures. Yeah, we'll get to the elephants in a moment because I love, I love them too, great animal. But, yeah. and you said you wanted to be George Adamson's assistant mm -hmm. and the lion population you're saying is down to 2,000 yeah. because they're being poisoned? Jeff, you know, we've been reporting to the government since 2008 about the use of this particular chemical in the killing of lions. At the time, you could actually buy this in the shops over the counter by asking for lion killer. That is what it was being sold as, lion killer. I actually bought this one in a shop and I said, I've got a problem with hyenas raiding my garbage bins. What can you give me? They sold me this furidan. It was 100 shillings. This container has enough to kill hundreds of lions. All it takes is a tiny amount to kill a lion. Let, let's just show the viewers what it looks like, right? If they can see, it's just a, it's like a purple, it looks like Omo, you know? Sort yeah, of. exactly. They're called granules. Um, the formulation is um, something like 5%. I think it actually says it on the container. Yes, 5% carbofuran. That's the active ingredient. Carbofuran is a deadly chemical. It's actually a neurotoxin. It affects your nerves. It paralyzes its victims. It causes asphyxiation. It shuts down your lungs, basically. That's how it kills. It's designed for insects. So what happens is you put this stuff in the ground when you're planting your vegetables. The plant absorbs into the leaves, into the fruit. Insects land on them and start feeding on them and that kills them because they're absorbing it from the plant itself. Um, the problem with this chemical is so deadly. I mean, you can imagine if a, if a tiny amount in a plant will kill an insect, um, how easy it would be then to use it for other purposes. So in this country, we have a major problem with Human wildlife conflict, lions killing people's livestock, uh, jackals, hyenas, um, and various things like that. Pastoralists have always gone after lions when they kill their livestock. It's always, always with a spear, and there was always a lot of courage and um, 
you know, pride in killing a lion with a spear, right? Um, now, what people are doing is taking a tiny amount of this, sprinkling it. You can see it's a short salt shaker kind of container. Sprinkling it on a carcass of a cow that's been killed by a lion. And then waiting for the lions to come back for the kill. So the lions return and you could wipe out an entire pride in, you know, minutes with this stuff. The cats are very, very sensitive to it. It takes a, maybe a quarter or less of a teaspoon to kill one lion. Um, of course, what happens is the lions die, vultures arrive, vultures eat it. Birds, for some reason, are extraordinarily um, sensitive to it. It takes one grain, and you can see how tiny these grains mm, are, yeah? Mm. It's like a grain of salt. Correct. One grain will kill a bird. That is how potent this chemical is. So it would kill a small bird. But what we're seeing is even more terrifying. So lions are shocking. People are very, very unhappy that Kenya's lions have declined from 15,000 down to fewer than 2,000, according to the Kenya Wildlife Service. That's just the tip of the iceberg. We have been reporting the use of this pesticide in fishing in Lake Victoria. So people are mixing it with water, pouring it into the lake, waiting for the fish to come up and then selling it in the market. We've been reporting this chemical being mixed with rice or on snails, been used in the rice schemes of Kenya, the big rice schemes, Bunyala, Ahero and Mwea, where people are putting it out in the fields and when flocks of birds arrive from Europe on the winter migration, they land and eat the stuff and die. They harvest those birds and sell them in the markets. So this is not just affecting amazing birds that are coming through Kenya. This is affecting a whole population of people who are eating food procured using chemical toxins. But I guess the obvious question, uh, Dr. Paula, the obvious question is, is anybody listening? When you raise this red flag that, you know, lion population is down to 2,000. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a huge scream. That's a huge red flag.